Chronic refractory tendinopathy is a very common problem. Today, the definitive treatment for the refractory case is a surgical procedure. It is characterized by cutting through and removing the diseased tissue. An innovative technology that has been introduced by 10X Health somewhat simulates surgery in that it also cuts through and removes diseased tissue. But it does so with local anesthesia and a percutaneous insertion of the ultrasonic energy. The safety and efficacy is not influenced by the setting in which this is performed. Today, we will be demonstrating the procedures in an ambulatory surgical center. However, they can equally and effectively be done in a procedural room or even in a clinical setting. This 44-year-old female housewife has a six-month history of medial elbow pain. She notes that it interferes with routine daily activities such as trying to twist the top off of a jar. She's had a cortisone injection that did not help at all. She has been doing eccentric exercises for two months and she says this does not seem to have benefited her either. She feels as though she has sufficient symptoms to justify some other form of intervention. I know you've had pain for several months. Can you tell me in the last two or three months, would you say your symptoms have gotten better, worse, or staying the same? Um, no, they're getting worse. I see. And if nothing were done at this point, uh, given the fact that you've lived with this for several months now, do you have a sense of whether or not this might resolve on its own, or do you feel like it has uh, developed a, a chronic nature to it? Um, no, it keeps coming back and it flares up. I see. And do you have any numbness or tingling in your hand at all? No. Okay. Would you mind showing me where you feel most of your pain? It's in this area. I see. Can you be a little bit more precise? Right, right down here. Okay. Now, I'm going to poke around. Tell me if I hit the area that bothers you the most. Uh, yes, right there. Okay, good. Now, just one more thing. I just want to make sure that your nerve is staying where it belongs. Okay, good. Uh, we've talked about the procedure that we've been uh, contemplating. Do you have any questions about that? No, I don't. Okay. The patient is positioned to allow the procedure to be comfortably performed and be comfortable for the patient as well. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. Good. Well, uh, I'll tell you everything we're going to do. The first thing we want to do is just verify or confirm where you're having most of your pain so that we're sure we're treating exactly the area that, that bothers you the most. So I'm going to poke around and you tell me if I hit the area that is bothering you the most. Yes, right there. Right here. Okay. Good. Now, I'm going to examine this with the ultrasound, and this will give me an idea of how extensive the problem is, and it will help us further localize our treatment. Okay, so I can see the bone where the tendon attaches, and there's some changes in the tendon that we usually see with this kind of a problem. So this certainly does explain in my mind your, your symptoms because it's exactly over the spot that you said hurts the most. So I think it's reasonable to go ahead with the procedure. So the next step is going to be just like you've had a cortisone injection. You've had injections before, is that right? Yes. Okay, so I'll tell you what we're doing. The first uh, thing is a clean the area. This is an antiseptic. And now we'll cover the area to make sure it doesn't get infected. Okay, so now we're going to cover this with these sterile towels. We'll numb it up with the local anesthetic and then we'll go ahead with the procedure. A thin layer of non-sterile gel 
is used to cover the face of the ultrasound transducer, and it is placed in a sterile sleeve. We've confirmed the point of maximum tenderness and have marked this with an X. And at this point, we will also uh, confirm this by uh, once again investigating with the ultrasound. And we can see what appears to be some calcification and right at the apex of the medial epicondyle, a little more calcification. And then this is right at the junction of the raphe between the flexure carpio naris and the pronator teres. So, and that's typically where the lesion for the medial epicondylitis is. So I think it would be reasonable to treat this precise area. There you can see some calcification right up at the apex of that uh, medial epicondyle. So with that, we'll introduce our, our local anesthetic. May feel a little stick, sorry. Generally, only two or three cc's is required, and, and that's more than adequate. As I introduce this, I like to, to address it as far as the bone. I like to tap on the bone with the local and with the needle. So right now, I'm up against bone, and that means that I'm just kind of where I want to be. So we'll go ahead and inject the track on the way out, and I always try to inject a little bit extra in the region of the dermal wheel or the inside of the puncture site. Use the 11 blade knife and pierce the skin. And then this fascia is rather dense. So I like to go ahead and, and penetrate the fascia with the knife. And if we're uh, properly oriented, we should be able to actually reach the bone with the knife, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm right at the site of pathology with my knife blade, and that should facilitate entry of the TX1 microtip. This is the TX1 microtip. This delivers the ultrasonic energy. The gel is water soluble, so as we place the, the sterile gel, to allow visualization of the microtip, it's important to recognize that the, since this is water soluble, the introduction of the gel under the skin will not cause an inclusion cyst or cause any complications or problems. And in fact, we've not had any reported complications to date. Now there you can see uh, no complications related to the gel. You can see the TX1 microtip and it exactly in line with the calcification and the stippling. And you can see we're introducing it right smack into the area that we're interested in. Now by depressing the foot pedal, I am now delivering the ultrasonic energy precisely uh, to the area that you can see on the, uh, that is visualized with the ultrasonic in, uh, ultrasound image. If the tip gets occluded or if the irrigation is not functioning, the energy shuts off when the uh, microtip is functioning properly, you can hear a auditory uh, humming, which means that the uh, ultrasonic energy is being imparted. Now we can hear the signal, but no other uh, evidence that this is functioning, which means that it is occluded. We can see with the ultrasound image, the calcification and the Microtip right at the apex of the epicondyle. And this whole area now is being treated with the ultrasonic energy and the area is being uh, tenotomized and the degenerative tissue is being removed through the microtip. We then work the surface of the epicondyle. 
And at this point and at this juncture, I'm irritating the surface to try to stimulate some healing. Now, it should be noted that the effectiveness of this is, uh, occurs with the removal of the hypoechoic area, which I'm in right now. Generally, for an epicondyle, that treatment is only about 45 seconds. Rarely does it require more than a minute of energy. And I'm at about 40 seconds now. So we'll continue to work this surface and work that hypoechoic area and work down the slope a bit, as you can see, right where that calcification is. Right at about 50 seconds. And I would think that should be adequate to treat this particular lesion. Just one little area to touch up, up a little bit more proximally, and I think we'll, we're done. So with that, the microtip is withdrawn. The puncture site does not need a suture uh, to close, but simply a, a steri-strip. One or maybe two stereo strips are, are adequate. And then we put a sterile occlusive dressing over that. We'll then wrap the elbow with an eighth bandage, uh, and this uh, stays on for just a couple of days. At the time of the clinical examination, it is important for the patient to point to the area of maximum tenderness and to confirm that area of maximum tenderness by the examination. It is also very important on the medial side to assess the status of the ulnar nerve. Flex and extend the elbow to assure the ulnar nerve is not subluxing. If the ulnar nerve does sublux, the procedure can still be safely performed, but the elbow is left extended. One should always confirm the pathology with an ultrasound examination before the procedure itself. The area in question is prepped and draped, just as if a steroid injection is to be performed. When introducing the local anesthetic, we also go to the bone at the site of the pathologic tissue attachment to the bone. The skin is incised with an 11 blade knife. However, this blade also is introduced through the fascia to facilitate the entry of the microtip to the pathologic tissue. The motion of the microtip is back and forth. Avoid out of plane motions as this is not an effective technique. There are visual clues to complete treatment, particularly if there's a hypoechoic area. This undergoes a transformation which indicates the area has been adequately treated that can be observed by the ultrasound examination. So are you having any discomfort now? No. Okay. Did it bother you while we were doing the procedure? Did it hurt? No. Oh, well, good, good. You may have some pain tonight, maybe uncomfortable trying to sleep. So I'd um, use some ice after dinner before you go to bed, and I'd also take a couple of Tylenol. You shouldn't need anything more than that. Tomorrow or the next day, if it's sore and uncomfortable, again, just uh, take the Tylenol. I want you to be pretty uh, uh, easy with it for the next two or three days. Don't do very much. After two or three days, you can use it for day-to-day -day routine activities, but don't challenge it. Don't, don't be too aggressive with it. I want to see you back in the clinic between two and three weeks, and um, we'll tell you where to go from there. But usually, uh, if everything's feeling good by six weeks, we'll turn you loose and let you gradually resume your normal activities. Now, my phone number is here on the card. If you have any problem or any questions, you just get in touch with me. And what I've just explained to you is also written down on the card for reinforcement. So do you have any questions? Do you understand what we're talking about? Uh -huh.
No questions and yes. Okay, good. All right. So we'll see you in a couple of weeks and you let us know if you have a problem. Okay. Okay, good.